This is a beautiful creation, the earth and flowers, the birds, trees, and gentle breeze. So then, you may ask yourself, what is wrong then, that there is so much evil and trouble abounding? Tony Broom Ministries brings you the following sermon to help explain why things are the way they are and offers the good news of a simple solution. Here's Pastor Tony with Curse Reverse. If you look around in this world today, you can see that the world has been under a curse. We can see the results of it. We can see it physically. We can see it spiritually. We can see it morally. All the morale and all the morals have been taken away in large degree. All of our freedoms are eroding away. We can see like never before a disintegration unraveling of society it has happened to big nations great nations before us it happened to the babylonian kingdom to the medo-persian kingdom to greece and to rome the one of the greatest nations that has ever been as an empire and yet it came apart not from the outside but from the inside and that's what happens many times to israel it happened to them and it happens to America is happening. The foundation on which we were built, we were built on the Christian Judea foundation, the Word of God. Our nation was built on the foundation of the principles of God's Word. And we can see that the further we are turning away from God, more and more everything is falling apart. When we turn away from God, we cannot expect to be blessed. We're turning further and further towards the curse. Curse reverse. I like that title. Maybe the Lord likes it too. And he gave me personality to know who to give it to. Curse reverse. God made everything beautiful, good and holy in the beginning. But disobedience brought sin, which resulted in curse. Genesis starts with creation. God creating the heaven and the earth. And he looked on everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And by the time you get to the end of the book of Genesis, you're ending with a coffin. That which started with creation ends with a coffin in the land of Egypt. The scripture said that they put Joseph in a coffin in Egypt. But that's not the end of the story, thank God. Israel went down into Egypt to save their life and to save their nation. But God's plan was not that they would be put in Egypt. Yes, for a little while. But God never intended for Israel to really be in Egypt. That's why He brought them out of Egypt. They were there and Joseph was used by God to save their lives and to save Egypt and to save the whole world. But because the king arose that did not know Joseph, they were taken into slavery. The people of God that had come there and had been a deliverance for Egypt, now Egypt is against them and they're in slavery. Joseph makes them promise, God will visit you and bring you up out of this place. And when he does, you will take my bones with you. That which starts in creation is now in a coffin. That's why we have coffins. That's why we have graveyards. That's why we have hospitals. We have been made to think that hospitals are good places. And they are if you have to have them. But it's not a good place in the sense that it's part of the curse. Lord have mercy. Coffins and caskets and all these funeral homes and things that never should have been. Didn't have to be. But it's because of the curse that these things came. Malachi chapter 4 ends with these words in verses 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. There's coming a day of judgment. There's a glad day of coming, a glad day of coming. But it's also a sad day of coming. A sad day coming. There's a sad day coming by and by when the saints and the sinners will be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? 
There's a day in the valley of decision. There's a day of judgment that's coming upon this world. The Lord said He would send the prophet Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. God is saying in effect that this has to happen. If this does not happen, this world will be eaten up, as it were, with a curse. If Elijah does not come, and more importantly even than him coming, if the heart of the fathers do not turn to their children again, and the heart of the children do not turn to their fathers again, God says there's nothing else for me to do but to smite the earth with a curse. That's serious business, thundering from the lungs and mouth of God Almighty. El Shaddai is a God Almighty. He's my El Shaddai. But He's also so high and holy that He cannot allow sin to go on. And He said, if things continue to go like they're going in America today, and the fathers hate the children, and the children hate the fathers, and everything's against one another, everybody, as a country boy said, He's against one another. And if it happens and keeps on happening that way, God said, there's nothing else I can do but to smite the earth with a curse. And you better pray that Elijah the prophet, when he comes, he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children again and the heart of the children to their fathers. Because of his holiness and righteousness, God had to allow the curse. But he has always desired to reverse it. He sent John the Baptist as a type of Elijah. He offered the kingdom to Israel. Jesus said, if you will receive it, this is Elias who was for to come. He spoke those words. He said, if you will receive it, this is Elijah who was to come. He was talking about John the Baptist, but in the person of John the Baptist, they could have had that Elijah had they accepted it, what he did and had they received it. They could have had the kingdom right then, but they rejected it. They not only rejected John the Baptist, but they rejected Jesus Christ. John the Baptist came, Luke chapter 1, Zechariah was given the prophecy that he would come and he would turn the heart of the fathers to their children again, and the heart of the children to their fathers. That's the same thing that was spoken about Elijah. It didn't work because they didn't accept it. So they're still under the curse. Many have tried to break curses, but that's witchcraft. It's going on in ministry today. I hate to have to tell you this, but there's too much witchcraft mixed up in ministry. Lord have mercy. It's going on right here in Henderson, Henderson, North Carolina too, if you don't know it. There's too much witchcraft mixed up in ministry. We have tried to pray for the sick and it didn't work or wasn't working or didn't seem to work. We didn't get the results. So we slip over into this thing of psychologicalism. We get into psychological. We start telling people how they should behave. We start telling people when to take their medicine and when not to take their medicine. And you can pray for the sick. Jesus said for you to do that. But if you're not a licensed medical person, you don't have a right to tell a person when to take their medicine and when not to take their medicine. You can get into spiritual as well as legal trouble if you do so. There's too much witchcraft going on in ministry today. They, that is those in witchcraft, they claim to cast and break spells or curses. You may be shocked to know this. But there is no generational curse, as some New Age preachers claim. All this preaching today is going on about a generational curse. But the problem is worse than a generational curse. It's embedded sin, which is part of our nature resulted from the fall. It's worse than a generational curse. You don't have a curse coming down from your father. You have something worse than that. You have the sin nature. It came down not only from your father, but from our first father, Adam. The curse resulted because of the fall of mankind. And we did what God told us not to do. There are three main curses which have been reversed, which we will call soil, 
sickness and sin. The curse of soil, Genesis chapter 3. Man and woman disobeyed God in the garden and they ate of the tree that God told them not to eat of. And they heard the voice of God coming and they ran and they hid themselves among the trees of the garden. God called unto them. And He said, where are you? And they said, we hid because we were naked. You know the story. He spoke judgment. Because you've listened to the serpent, you'll have these problems. And He spoke to the serpent because you have deceived the woman, you will crawl on your belly. And then to Adam in verse 17, unto Adam He said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. We can hear the sternness in the voice of God. God is angry with us because of our disobedience. He was angry with Adam and Eve. But even more than anger, more than he was angry, as much as he's angry at sin, he's even more disappointed because of our reluctance and refusal to trust in him. He was more disappointed in Adam and Eve than he was angry at them. God knew what they were going to do. But he was still disappointed that they had chosen to do what they should not have done. Have you eaten of the tree? God knew it. Because you have done this, curse is a ground for your sake. You will eat of it in the sweat of your face. You will get bread until you return to the ground from where you were taken. For 2,000 long agonizing years, man labored under the heavy load of the curse of the ground or soil. What an awful time. They would go out every day and try to get a little bread. Barely enough to stay alive. Because the ground was cursed. It was hard. Thorns and thistles grew. And we can see it now. But it was nothing like it was then. 2,000 years from creation to the flood. During that 2,000 years, the ground was cursed. Man trying to get a little bread to stay alive. It's getting that way now. Because of inflation. Because of our vote. We vote for the wrong boat. Because of the way that we live. Because of the choices that we make. We're heading in the wrong direction. We're heading north when we're supposed to go south. Or we're heading south when we're supposed to go north. I don't know, but anyway, we're headed in the wrong direction. When you're going the wrong way, the biggest thing you can do to be a hero is turn around and go the right way. And I'm calling on America out of the Spirit of God today. Turn around and go the right way. Then there was Noah and the ark and the flood. After the flood, when Noah and his family came forth out of the ark, one of the things that God said to him was in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 and 21. Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. God smelled the sacrifice of the offering that was an atonement for sin. And He said, I will not again anymore smite the ground for man's sake. He reversed the curse. He's a merciful God. He didn't have to have mercy on Adam and Eve. He didn't have to have mercy on Tony Broom. But He's a merciful God. He loves us in spite of our sins. He loves us in spite of everything that we've done. He loves us anyway. There's a song out now that said He loved me anyway. It didn't matter what I had done. It didn't matter who I was. It didn't matter what I had been. He loved me anyway. He loves me. He had mercy on me. He reversed the curse. He took away that curse. He said, For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. It was like God is saying, I can curse the ground. I can make it into a stone. But that's not going to change man's heart. Man's heart has to be changed. It's not the condition of the ground. God reversed the curse. 
He said man's heart, the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. And that's the way it's going to be until you get right with God. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. The curse of sickness. Sickness is a part of the curse of the law. Cursed. 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 Is everyone who does not continue in all the works of the law to do them. You might as well roll up your sleeve. We were talking about rolling up sleeve the other week in revival. You might as well roll up your sleeve and give yourself a lethal injection. In the sense that we're all guilty. He said, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all the works of the law to do them. Guilty, none of us have. We're on the curse. Sickness is part of that curse. Almost every disease and sickness imaginable is listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, God says you'll be blessed if you do what's right. You keep the law, you do what's right. You'll be blessed in the city, you'll be blessed in the field, you'll be blessed in the works of your hands, you'll be blessed in the fruit of your body, you'll be blessed in your coming in, blessed in your going out. Yes. Pentecost is like that part. But the part we don't like is we can't be blessed because we're guilty to start with. We didn't do the law. We didn't even have the law as Gentiles. We had the law, we were under it, but we didn't have it to keep. We didn't have it, it wasn't given to us, but we were guilty of sin. And all these curses. If you don't do what's right, you'll be cursed in the city, you'll be cursed in the field, you'll be cursed in the fruit of your body, you'll be cursed in the fruit of the ground. Everything you'll do will be cursed. And all these diseases will come upon you. Consumption. Many say that's tuberculosis. Breathing. Diseases. Emphysema. Lung disease. Fever. Inflammation. Huh? Inflammation. Don't talk about going to bed with Arthur. All these artist boys. We pet these diseases. I go to bed with my arthritis. It ain't your arthritis. It's a curse. It's part of the curse. To hell with it. Send it back to hell where it belongs. Extreme burning. You can't explain what it is. The botch of Egypt. Boils. Emeralds. Y'all church folk don't get mad with me now. You know what hemorrhoids are, aren't you? Hemorrhoids. <laughs> Unless you're a girl and this is her roid, I guess. <laughs> Scab. Nasty stuff. Itch. Like that dog commercial. Itch, itch, scratch, scratch. Itch, scratch. Itch, itch, scratch, scratch. Madness. That's the preacher this morning. I done gone mad, I think. Madness. Blindness. Oh, Lord, help us. Ain't no my blindness. It ain't my blindness. I hate it. I hate the devil who causes it. Astonishment of heart. Their heart will fail them for looking after those things that are coming on the earth. It's part of the curse. Problems in the knees and legs. Nobody in here has that, do they? It's part of the curse. Sores from head to toe. All the diseases of Egypt which you were afraid of, and also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. That covers all of it. This cannot be done away with. It had to be reversed. And thank God there's a Savior who came to the world, that God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The Savior came to the world and He reversed the curse. Galatians 3.13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The law said if a man hangs on a tree they used to hang people who did bad things. I don't know. I know that sounds bad but I'll tell you what if they'd go back to capital punishment they'd quit some of this mess. Plug the electric chair back up and they'd quit some of this mess. If you think that's too hard there's an easy way to do it. Just put a little thing in their arm and it'll lead you on down the river. And you won't stop at the river too, I'm afraid, unless you get right with God. But the curse 
if a man was hung on a tree, he had to be taken down at sundown because the scripture said, he who is hanged is cursed of God. God had to curse his own son because he was hung on a tree. He was a curse for us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For he has made a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone that hangs on a tree. The scripture said, with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. I cannot tell you, I'm a preacher. I'm not a doctor. I don't even have a doctor of divinity degree. But I tell you what I do have. I can't tell you when to take your physical medicine. But I can tell you when to take your spiritual medicine. You take your physical medicine, you're not supposed to take it, but whenever you're supposed to take it, once or twice a day or whatever it is. But this is what I'm talking about, you can take it any time. Take a little bit of Isaiah 53, 5. With his stripes we're healed. Put a little bit of himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. By whose stripes you were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. You can take that anytime you want to. And apply it. Not only is it oral, you can take it by mouth. But you can take it topically. You can apply it to the parts of your body. The Bible said that even though our body is not redeemed yet, that our heart is sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies are washed with pure water. We're washed with the water of the Word. Wash your body, sick as it may be. Wash it in the water of the Word. If your back is out of whack, put the Word of God on it. If you've got inflammation in your joints, put the Word of God on it. The Word of God said it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It goes down in there to those joints and marrow of the bone. Hallelujah. By whose stripes you were healed. I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15, 26. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Exodus 23, 25. Then there's a curse of sin. The curse of sin has not yet been removed from this earth. But curse reverse can be seen in the life of every born-again believer. You want to know what curse reverse looks like? Just look at the life of every born again believer and you'll see the curse has been reversed. We're still in this physical world, but we're not bound by the curse anymore. The Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. Our iniquity, our sin, all of our curse has been laid on Christ. And if you'll receive it, all that curse is removed from you. But if you do not receive it, you still retain it and you'll have to suffer the wrath of God. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Psalm 103 verse 3. He has forgiven all your trespasses. Colossians 2.13. Just so somebody can't say, oh, he's just in the Old Testament. No, it's everywhere. Old, new, and all. And then we come to the end, Revelation 22 verse 3. There shall be no more curse. One of these days, the actual curse, everything that represents the curse and the elements will melt with fervent heat and God will wipe away this world and He will do it over again and He will make it new again. And the very elements, the very elements will melt with fervent heat and the clouds will roll away and the heavens will roll back like a scroll. There will be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, in that holy city. His servants shall serve Him, and they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. No more curse. Curse reverse. Father, thank You for this opportunity to be in this place today. To hear Your Word, to sing the songs, to praise Your name, to have prayer together, to worship You in the beauty of holiness. We love you today. We bless you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law. And I pray that many men and women and boys and girls would be born again today and that curse would be lifted from their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse for us. Make sure that you have given your heart and life to Him today. Curse Reverse has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 